Issue nine. Raise the arms. We learned that last week. Does that little one hour thing show up on there? No? Okay, we're good. Okay, let's do it. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Issue Night. If you've never seen the show before, we talk about important and serious issues of the day that, frankly, you just don't find covered in the uh, mainstream media out there. That's right. Why don't we get on to our first set of issues, and we call these issues. (laughs) (laughs) NASA issues. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Say it's okay. Just raise your arms. I'm good. Okay. Um, and specifically, we're talking about NASA issues. We're talking about the space um, station issues. And um, the space station uh, recently has decided to put a food court up there. Um, and I guess, how many, um, how many astronauts are up there at any given time? There's about four or five. I think right? all of them are. Four all or five. So they have a food court up there, and well, they 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 created it, Jay. I mean, they, yeah. they thought it was a good idea. They, uh, the Russian guys started a McDonald's, and the uh, French guys doing a Wendy's, and um, okay. the English guy is um, fish and chips, beer. And... Well, that'd be Long John Silver's. That's oh, that's fish and chips. Okay, that's what they tell me. The problem is, Jay, nobody's coming. I mean, up there. I mean, they're all. There's like, yeah. there's no, well, they thought people would come. They said, you know, if you build, build it, this, food, yeah, come. yeah, exactly. Right. That exactly. kind of yeah. idea. And we're going to make a food court and people are going to come and it'll be great. Um, franchise and, and, of the future. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. People bought in the astronauts bought the franchises, have the licensing. Right. And it's a lot permits. of money. The subway, the, the Italian guy from subway. I mean, it is a lot of money, 150 grand or something like that for yeah. a subway. Yeah. And like nobody's coming. I mean, well, unless the Russian guy takes a break and comes over. Yeah. his place you know well my question is did they really think it through did they think through how are we going to get people coming and that? well it was done in you know in congress and you know they they, they make the decisions there nasa and the yeah it was, budgetary it was and, kind of like a stimulus thing okay you know so, you had people put to work for you know six months getting the thing up there and then yeah, yeah, yeah but people to work okay. right sure okay so the problem is is now you got four guys who are manning a food court and really should be manning a, f- a space station because last we heard the space station is not in the correct orbit right. anymore. Um, the uh, you know the little thing that spins is not spinning and it's kind of rusting up right now. Um, right. And then you know the guys are they're taking it apart because they're like, well, we can scrap this thing at least right. and get some our money back from buying the franchises and right well um, and they're taking like you know the canadian arm they removed it and now like the guy in wendy's is using it to like flip burgers and stuff yeah yeah hmm. that's uh I'm i just go ahead, I, I just thought that they'd be able to attract some alien spacecrafts to come in and you know at least the drive through part of it would would pick up some some business well but. you would think because they thought you know like with for the first contact documentary, they shot something in the space, and and an alien saw it go by, and they came, and that's what they thought. They, they and back, they shoot yeah. stuff in the space all the time, thinking, oh, an alien's going to see this flare. I just shot a flare in there, but the the flare doesn't really go as fast as, you know, a, a spaceship, right. or and, and you it know, really doesn't go far. They have all the uh, they, they can analyze junk and space junk. Problem is, they think it's a client. They're all excited, you know. It says, oh, there's something yeah, coming our yeah, way, you know, sure. and really, you know, down in the and the planet, they're saying, no, it's space junk, you know, do a maneuver. But it's really, you know, just space junk, and it's really, you know, they're, they're hoping. I think, they, I think they really misjudged, too, how much damage would happen to the space station from opening the window for the drive through Yeah, correct. Yeah, that, I mean, we forgot right. to bring that up, the because window. now they have the drive through right. and they're like, hey, we know now we have a drive through We should get even more people coming well, up. Well, and, and when you open the thing, yeah. I don't think they think, like, negative the, pressure, what, what happens, Tony? Yeah, big, big, implosive-like forces so you gotta 
to all an the airlock food, thingy. All the food like just yeah, you know, flies you, you, out. You open one and you put the food and you close it, and then they open the other one to let it out. But then the food just goes because there's still a vacuum. So you got you got to decompress it so that or hook right to it. You know what I mean? Like did like they that. ever find that Burger King astronaut? Uh no no never no, no. never did um sad I don't remember if they did or not um I had a question a comment about uh food in space I forgot what it was Jay do you remember well the problem is it's like okay the astronauts are now eating their food so they're preparing it and they're going to each other like hey can I buy this and they're like well what kind of money do you have and they don't have money so what they're doing is just they're kind of ripping apart parts of the, the station and saying, you know, here's some copper. Right. You know, copper's at whatever, what is it, $3, three dollars and some odd cents. Right, they're scrapping. I mean, no. yeah, and the, the, one of the guys made a scrap, little scrapyard for it. But the, uh, And they do have some money, I mean, but they have their own currency. You know, the French and the Russian have their own currency, and there's no exchange rate, and there's no system for that. Good point. Um mm -hmm. Tom Barr's bringing up that uh, deep fryers in zero gravity are are pretty dangerous. That's true. Um, they they didn't they, think of that either because now after the well, burn accident, well, they're all wearing their suits now, pretty much when they cook because there's just, there's just like food and fries, suits. you know, because they open up the window and all that food flies all over the place. The and grease, the, the, the grease is all over, yeah. and they got you know. And and the problem yeah. is they they had to take Disgusting. the heat shields off and then put them on themselves. So now how do they get back? How do they re-enter? The re-entry. They've used it? all their heat shields. The heat shield, well, yeah. the only solution they've come up with is that Congress is trying to pass another stimulus to take people and put them on the space shuttle and bring them through the drive-thru. Mm. So these guys have clients. You know, right. They have customers. So and they got to reinstitute the space shuttle program. Yeah. And then, which will create jobs. And then they got to um, pay people. To, to go on the space shuttle. Yep. And then they got to subsidize the buying of the food because I'm sure it's a pretty. It's not a three dollar Happy Meal up there, right? Right. right. It's you know, like so. eight ninety nine. I mean, that's that's yeah. dollars. So it's got to be subsidized. And then uh, they got to get get them all back in time to to pay their taxes. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. You just join us. You're watching Issue Night. We talk about important and serious. Issues of the day. Why don't we get on to um, our next set of issues, and we like to call these. What do we call these, Jay? Carbon, carbon footprint, footprint issues. issues. Carbon football footprint mm -hmm. issues. Let me out of jail. And basically, you know, again, the movement to try to reduce your carbon footprint. I don't know what what is that, Tony? Carbon footprint. Um, well, y'all got different size feet, so I guess you'd make a different size print. And if your boots are made out of like an oil-based substance, they'd be carbon. Okay. Right. So, what about plastic? Plastic, yeah. Plastic oh, sure. carbon footprint. Yeah, I would think so. Right. I think okay. the way that they measure carbon. your carbon footprint, actually, getting back to Tony's point, is the larger your foot is when you when you press it down on carbon paper mm. the bigger your carbon your footprint. carbon footprint. that makes sense well um, yeah i think that's scientific mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well getting back to the point is that the carbon footprint uh they want to reduce these things so they're saying hey when you breathe out you're breathing out bad air like, what it was a carbon carbon monoxide right you're breathing out sure. carbon okay. dioxide isn't it mostly same thing so you're breathing that out and you know, um, people are saying, you know what, we need to reduce that. So plants take in carb. Oh, <laughs> plants take in carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, and they produce oxygen, oxygen. carbonated carbon and oxygen, carbon and oxide. Oxygen. So o now oxygen. the regulation oh. is when you walk more than a mile, you have to have a plant on you. You got to be carrying a plant to take the carbon dioxide that you're exhaling and converting it back to oxygen. Right. Correct. Right. You have Correct. to carry equal per your weight. So, I mean, you have to, they have these complex little backpack systems with, it's got a pedometer on it with uh, plants, you know, on them. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're basically your own biosphere. Kind of, but it, it's open air. I mean, there's no sphere around you. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be more effective if they made you wear a sphere. I mean, well, you could be... th there's guys who are doing that. That you bring that. What they're doing is they have to. If you want to do the spare route, 
there's a kit and you got to follow the instructions and then you have to go to an inspector to make sure it's fine but you you basically take the plastic and you duct tape mm -hmm. the plastic around yeah. yourself mm -hmm. um, then you you have a HEPA filter there and you got to duct tape that on real good and then it's got a uh, you got to have a scrubber so when you breathe it, it goes through the HEPA filter and then the scrubber and it and it goes out and and you know, then but you have to learn to walk in it. And you, know, I, you know who's wearing those? Who? Are, are the cheaters. Yeah. You know, the, the enforcement people are out, and they caught people, like, carrying around plastic plants. Yeah. So just like if you're pulled over and you need a DWI oh, and you got to blow in a tube, yeah. these guys have got to wear the bubble suits. Yeah. Okay, because if they're not self-sustaining, then, you know, there's consequences. That's a good point. So... You know? So a plastic plant really isn't going to take in the carbon monoxide. It's going it to. It really doesn't, Jay. It really wasn't designed for that. Um, it, the original designers didn't create the plastic plant to actually have any kind of transfer of chemicals or oxygen or carbon dioxide. It really, plastic plants, plastic flowers, none of that stuff actually produces anything. And if you, you know, go to use something in a way it wasn't designed, that could be an OSHA violation too. So True. Um, your right. wife, Jay, says Han Solo started the carbon footprint movement. I believe. Okay. Well, I don't remember which one of the documentaries he did that in, but it's a good point. Yeah. Actually, it was more of a face print, wasn't it? Mm. Face and hand mm. print. This is the thing is that, you know, when you get Hollywood actors, you know, in their wisdom coming up with these ideas, you get some good ideas like this. Like, you know, yeah, maybe we should be um, carrying around plants and that. Then there's plant suits. There's like chia suits. Chia pet that, suits. Yeah, those are awesome. I have one of those, Jay. Yeah, yeah, I have a, yeah. Well, you have to, it's kind of like the, you know. They're itchy, though. Yeah, well, the, the NASA guys wear the suit, and they actually pee in the suits and all that's kind of gross. But they use the same type of system to water the chia pet. Okay? And, it, and then it comes out, and it just keeps growing. So your urine water. Well, I'm just saying, you can, you can hook up a hose to it if you want. Okay. But it's, it's all wet inside. You're kind of like swimming inside your suit. And then the chia just comes out. You know, and it grows all around you. It makes it hard to work in space, actually. Yeah. yeah. The, in the documentary uh, Dune, they had those suits. Recirculate yeah, the water. Yeah. 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 And then they would sip from it, you know. All right. So, and, good point. And Predator versus Alien. <clears throat> okay. okay. If you just join us, you're watching How old this are these chips, Tony? Uh, they're like super stale. They're from the last episode. We all right. All right. Three I'm right, sorry. Um, we're trying to talk about the important and serious issues of our day. Why don't we get on to the next set of issues and we call these boys, the boys, boys, like it. Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> City of Buffalo City issues. Of Buffalo issues. City, of City of Buffalo issues. Breathe in the bag, Jay. Breathe in the bag. Breathe. <laughs> I, th I think if he does that, he's breathing his own carbon monoxide. So maybe we should put some plants in the bag, and then he'd be able to breathe into the bag. I'm okay. okay. Now lose the issue. Too. All right. Um, City of Buffalo issues. Hit, you know, hit play. Here's the thing with City of Buffalo. They're always looking. Sorry. They're always looking to increase revenue, especially from parking meters. Okay. And you know, a viewer um, emailed us in, and, and um, now I guess what's happening in the city is you have parking meters for other things besides cars. Like uh, they have parking meters now for animals. So you bring an animal, you gotta you gotta so I'm, tie him up. I'm walking my dog. Correct. And then the dog does his business, and while he's businessing, he's got to put a quarter in the meter to pay for the time he's <coughs> at the, the meter. Does he have a permit permit for this business? And then what? you've got to clean up his business. So you've got <laughs> to probably put a. I mean, are we considered it, animals? Do it. It's prorated based on how much business he does. Um, you know yeah. what? Yeah. I'm looking up in the dictionary right now. Yes, uh, we are actually in the animal kingdom, so you're considered an animal. So not only do you use your, you have to pay for your pet, you got to pay for yourself for using that space. Okay. Right there. So that now <laughs> you got two. You got people and dogs. People with dogs and the people yeah. and the dog. And so, what other animals are there? Well, it could be anything. It could be an insect on you. You know, so say you're like, all right, I park my car. I'm going to the court office because I got to pay off my parking meter fine. And there's some type of bug mm -hmm. on you. Now you have to, 
you got to leave that bug outside, but you got to chain the bug up to the parking meter. Okay. I don't know how exactly Jay, you do that. I wasn't completely listening from the start. So what exactly is the issue? What's uh, the this deal? issue has to do with um, the uh, there's meters now in Buffalo for uh, you have to pay for animal space. Right, so but if you, we have to pay for our space too, right? Y your parking space, your space, if you're just going to stand there. No, what if I'm parking my car? If you're parking your car and you pay for your car, mm -hmm. but you better get where you're going quick. Because if you loiter around, then you got to pay for that space that you're loitering in. Um, however, oh. if you have an animal, you got to pay, you got to tie up your animal and pay the meter. Or if there's a bug on you, we're saying now you got to take that bug and somehow connect the bug to the meter without harming the bug. Can I just leave the, the animal in my car? Uh, no, you Why can't not? do that. Oh. Because um, that's a loss of revenue for the city, right, Tone? So you've got. You, your car, you, your pet dog, any insects that might be on you or your dog, fleas or otherwise. Um, so it's adding up. And then, well, what if what if I'm not in the car? What if I'm I live downtown and I have a cat, and it's an indoor outdoor cat, and the cat goes out and wanders around? It should bring some quarters with it. Well, if if the cat doesn't have quarters, will will I get a bill in the mail? How does this work? How do There's cameras around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus, you you're in the city. You gotta have a barcode on your cat. So okay. when your cat, so it'll scan. You my know, cat. if the cat like goes a through a red light, yeah. Tattoo or something like. Well, what I gotta do is um well, shave like the cat. Easy pass. I can prepay <laughs> the collar. It's actually called Easy Cat, Tony. Easy Cat, right? Yeah. I can prepay, and then every time it goes by. So I gotta train my cat not to loiter. I guess is. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Now, what if I I'm I riding I'm riding a horse? What if I mean what do I what happens? Oh, that's my vehicle. That's a good point. Um, I mean, according to the city pamphlet here, um, that you gotta pay for your horse, um, and then you have to uh, you gotta pay for the guy who takes care of your horse when you're not there. Hmm. So you you are paying double. They're trying. Yeah, yeah, you're paying double. So wow. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, though, is it's not only to animals. They now now have parking meters for droids. So mm. <clears throat> any droid that comes into the city has to have parking meters. Um, but and, uh, conversely, any city building has to have droid access. What about so the, it's kind of a trade off? What there. about the droid that ha looks like a garbage can? You know, in the uh, the sixth document, the the fourth documentary, fourth, yeah. where he's upside down and he's you know. Oh, and there's another one. He's getting his feet burned. Yes. What about that guy? Does he need? Is he like considered a, a like a county worker? Because um, he can probably <clears throat> walking trash can. <coughs> I don't know, Tony. He, he this guy would have had to apply for the county and be an official county employee and probably right. have something burned onto him, you know, to to indicate. Well, I think property. that's what they were doing in in the documentary. Is they're burning the you know property of Erie County. Yeah, on his feet. Yeah. Hey kids, a, kids, don't be burning stuff on to droids. Okay, that's not that's not a good idea. It's not your job. It's not your job. Don't just because we're talking. Don't be burning things on the droids. No barcodes or your initials or high score of your video game. Nothing like that. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. But as a county worker, he, I think he would be exempt at least when he's on the clock. Okay. So if okay, so he's exempt. But if he's not on the clock, then he's got to pay for his parking space. Sure. Um, and then, but at the same time, the, the whatever city building he ends, enters has to have droid access. So, you know, whatever it is, you know, if it's the walking feet, he might be able to use steps. I don't know. But if it's like an RTD2 unit, an R, they can't climb steps, right? Well, in the early ones, he could fly. Well, so. he, yeah, he has the little jet things he can fly up. But Jet I things. think he can only do that a few times. He right, run I mean, out after a while. Well, yeah. What kind of fuel yeah. do they run on? I don't know. I mean, do they run out of energy? How long do those droids last for? A long time, according to the documentaries. I mean, he right. was in what the second one. Right. I've never the, seen him recharge. The, I've never seen him plug in. I've never in seen. He most. does plug in to systems to access them, but who knows if he's recharging yeah, he at that usually point? Usually, gets pretty fried when he does that. Though. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. Okay. Back I problems. think there's a flux capacitor hmm. right in the droid that. Pretty much forever. You just joined us. Answer the question. Yeah, I think we did. If you just joined us, you're watching Issue Night, where we talk about important and serious issues of the day. Why don't we get on our next issues, which we call? What do we call these, Jay? Bubble hockey issues. Bubble hockey issues.
So in bubble hockey now, um, what they want to do, there's a movement to get rid of the boo button in bubble hockey. Oh. So you have... Um, one word <clears throat> to say about that. Pardon me? I've got one word for you. Go ahead. Boo! All right, so Tony doesn't like it. I um, don't like it at all. The idea is that the players are getting their feelings hurt because they are not, you know, you know, they're, whatever. They're, they're getting booed, and it's really not their fault. It's not like they're the ones moving. Someone else is controlling the knobs. So. Hey, these, these guys are rich. I mean, they're making they're, – the greed is just driving me crazy with these hockey players. They're making quarters upon quarters. Yeah. You know, they're, they're robbing Billy Blind. And I'm just – I don't know. It's, to me, it's uh, – let them, let them be, let them, let their feelings be hurt, you know? I'd like um, to see him go down to taking income of dimes. Right. Pennies. Good point. I missed the issue. I was watching the uh All right, the it's commercial. the bubble hockey players are trying to get rid of the boo button because it's hurting their feelings. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm with Mike. I mean, they're making a lot of quarters. They could pay for some serious psychological <clears throat> counseling for... Well, making. here's the thing. Do some players underperform? Because I know sometimes I turn the knob and the player's not turning the way I want him to turn. Or I have a breakaway and somehow the guy shoots it wide. You know, I do the same maneuver I always do, mm. but somehow that puck goes Kinda wide. gets caught or goes slower. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jay. That That's a problem. No. That's and more to do with building, though. Keep maintaining buildings, you know, like the buildings and grounds, how they maintain their facilities. Really? Well, I think I think there's a lot to be said. What Jay was saying, you know, with you got these these high played, highly paid bubble hockey years, players, and they've got these really fragile, you know, not complexions like they're um uh, c c counter like, proposals. Sounds mm -hmm. like um, stratosphere. Uh, strat uh, stratosphere. Uh, stra social stra stra uh, extravagant. Uh, extravagant. Water balloon, Arbor, fragile, uh, cubal um, um, clouds, Wookie, crystal, and and so they're, like they're they're just not very tough mentally, you know what I mean? And so that's a problem. I mean, as the bubble hockey coaches will say, I really gotta, you know, schmooze these guys and kind of baby them and pamper them, and it, it's a problem throughout our society. And I, and I think we just need to raise tougher kids and tougher bubble hockey players so that they can handle the boo button. All right, my question though is. These guys, you you never know if their feelings are hurt. Mm -hmm. They have the same expression, right? You know, I know. What does it look like? What, I mean, I like there... this, Jay. Same expression, never changes, never changes, well, never smiles. You know, they never say hi to the kids. You know, or watching, never give autographs. I really wonder if their feelings are hurt. You know, I'm wondering if this is a bargaining ploy. You know, this is one of those you know union things that. Well, they just don't want something taken away from them, you know. I don't know. We did talk about the lockout uh, a few years, a few shows ago. Yeah, and um, Tom Barr brings it up, and we did talk about talk about the lockout and how it's affected their psyche and the fans and how they're not coming and how they're never going to come to watch hockey games again ever. I'm not bitter. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's just I can't tell. I don't think their feelings are hurt. I think some of these guys, what they're doing is that they're trying to melt themselves a little bit to get tears. So, you know, there's kind of, um, you know, at night they'll they'll somehow get a hold of a lighter from the bar or whatever, and and one will light it and and put it close to the one face and melt a little so bit so it looks like tears. Simulating tears to gather sympathy is that what they're looking for? That'd be my guess, but I, I hmm. just uh, at the same time it's kind of disfiguring them. I mean, some guys you know just don't have eyes anymore, so yeah, they and you run even... out of tears because you run out of plastic pretty much. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean it's tears of plastic. Yeah, somewhat toxic. Yeah, correct, hmm. correct. Tony. Yeah, I wouldn't want to breathe. Plastic tears, burning, yeah. melting. It smells in the bubble. Things. I mean, whatever you do in the bubble, I mean, whatever you yeah. do in the bubble, pretty stays, much everybody stays in the bubble. In the bubble yeah. Yeah. <coughs> you just join us, you're watching Issue Night. We talk about important and serious issues of the day. Why don't we get on our final set of issues, which we call Recycling Issues. Recycling Issues. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Recycling Issues. So this has to do with. Um, the uh, Tom, what is this? This is some type of EPA points for recycling. You recycle oh, stuff, yeah, and how does it work? Yeah, they want to encourage recycling. It's 
uh, pay to throw, I think it is. They actually pay you to throw your recycling in the recycle bin. Plug us in, Tony. Anyway. We're running on reserve power, apparently. All right. So you're you're getting paid to to throw oh, no. recycling Sorry, stuff out, and they give you apparently <laughs> apparently the laptop has not been plugged in uh, oh, wow. for the last. Uh, so can people still hear us? Yeah, I okay, think so. Great. But um, it says you're running on reserve power. Couldn't right, you told me that before? Before, she's got before I ran the reserve power. Yeah, this, this plug oh my gosh, there's power strips in the ceiling. That's totally an OSHA regulation uh, violation. Uh, oh okay. no. Something's well, gonna break here. Some issues here. Oh, All right. no. Okay. Basically, I'll just get to the, the point is that Woo! there are credits okay. that you get for recycling, and the EPA is like, hey, if you recycle a lot, we'll give you these credits. And my question is, what can you get for these credits? And we went online and we checked it out, and pretty much you can get like an EPA, a pencil that says EPA on it. If you want, you can have something like that, and it's all like lead free and super environmentally used with you know, 100% recycled materials. And, you know, you can write a couple times with it, but probably not more than that. And you probably want to throw it out after that. Um, well, no, you wouldn't want to throw it out. You'd want to recycle uh, it. Good point, Tony. Um, and and then, then you could get more points. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> now, Mark, what else is there? What else does the EPA give you? I mean, I know one is like a baseball cap you could get that says EPA. Right there's with a, a smile. There's on it. the EPA slip and slide made out of uh, recycled plastics. Okay. There's Wegman's bags actually. The uh, EPA foam thumb number one, number one. Oh yeah, yeah, right. right. Um, made out of uh, I think it's made out of vegetables. You know what though? I we got the EPA um, <laughs> uh, slip and slide, but it was made out of burlap. And I, oh. I don't think it worked. I don't. I, the kids were getting hurt. They were getting brush burned. Yeah, band aids. And they're like, "Hey, when you're done, you can bury it." And we're like, "Well, I guess," but we didn't really ever want to use it again. Nor did we want anyone to use it again. So I, I you know, but I'm sorry, Mark. What else is there? What else? What other EPA fun items do they have? Uh, there's the EPA Jack in the Box, uh, okay. where the uh, EPA police jump out and uh say recycle recycle okay okay gotcha that's that's kind of fun that like for a little kid that's kind of scary i mean it's scary the epa guy shows up at your house and wants to find you and things like that so right and then i think they're also giving away a recycled ipad okay which does that even work um no but it looks a lot like an ipad and so a lot of people put in their points for it Hmm. okay Okay. So it's really just a, it doesn't actually work. It's just a kind of a no. Model. It's a it's a piece of recycled plastic, um, but they have a, it's the highest point total that they offer. So oh, kind of, kind of form of form molded into right right. So, so you, you can, can carry it. Around. You can go out and carry it around and carry look like you have you, it. Yeah. That that he works. That's yeah. The social st- right status and thing. it's recycled. Well, one of my favorites was you can get the um, the EPA like hey we'll plant a tree for you but when the next stimulus comes about. So you gotta, you know, it's kind of a promise. It's like um, one of those uh, notes you get from the government where it's like, hey, we promise to pay you in 20 years. You know, it's kind of like, hey, we promise to plant a tree in 20 years as long as there's some stimulus program that pays for it. So, you know, so that's kind of a, a fun, cool, like, hey, get the kids together kind of thing to get to. Now, does your article say how you get the points though? I mean, what, <coughs> how do I get credit for recycling my stuff? Well, you have a you have like Wegmans. You can di- di- type your phone number in, or you have the card, swipe card in your wallet, and you get points that way. And you get gas, you can get stuff off your gas too. <laughs> That's Tops. a good point. Yeah. Good. So, so the new program is you got to go somewhere, or do they do in the curbside one? Yeah, they've exactly. got the, the oh. swipe at the curbside. Yeah. Okay. As they collect. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Oh. Thank you once again, everyone, uh, for joining us, not only on television, but also on the Internet. So thank you for joining us for another edition of Issue Done.